Lesson 6-2, inverses and contrapositives. Back to geometry logic um, with the if-then statements. What do we call an if-then statement? A lot of people get it confused since it's been a little while. We call it a conditional. And we break it into two parts. The first part is hypothesis. I have a lot of fun with this in class, but I'll keep it simple here. If x equals 2 then 2x equals 4. So that's the hypothesis here. And the conclusion is here. Simple enough. Just one thing that pops up. In a proof Hypothesis is the given, and the what to prove is the conclusion. More on that later, but that seems to cause problems. If I give you these two lines are parallel, I want you to prove these two angles congruent. The given's hypothesis, if these two lines are parallel, then these two angles are congruent. A lot of people haven't been linking those up. So here's my statement. If x equals 2, then 2x equals 4. We've done the converse before, so this is still review. If 2x equals 4, then x equals 2. And by the way, this is true, and this is also true. And I can just tell by looking at it. I haven't really done anything fancy. Now, since they're both true, we can write them as biconditional. We put this if and only if in the middle and we say 2x equals 4 if and only if x equals 2 or we could write it the other way x equals 2 if and only if 2x equals 4 so that's a biconditional now inverse if x equals 2 then 2x equals 4. The inverse, just put a knot in front of each one of them. If x, if x does not equal 2, then 2x does not equal 4. And I don't care if it's true or false. I'm just working on practicing writing the inverse. I'll take this to another level, but for now, just don't get hung up on it. And the contrapositive. This is our conditional then the contrapositive if 2x does not equal 4 then x does not equal 2 these two the original conditional and the contrapositive are logically equivalent they're the same thing more on that later but you can basically say if one's true without thinking about it without judging it or testing it the other's true if one's false the other's false and some people call the contrapositive the converse of the inverse if you look at the original statement think about it you'll get it we took these two pieces and flipped them because that's what the contrapositive is Lots of nonsense here. Don't stress about it. You'll get plenty of practice so you get good at it. So we'll do another example. We'll start with the conditional. And I will do a non-math one. If I fall down, then I break my nose. Don't know if it's true or not. Just putting a statement out there. Converse for now. 
if I break my nose. Then I fell down. Inverse. If I didn't fall down, then I didn't break my nose. And finally, the contrapositive, and you can see why I use math, these take a long time to write. If I didn't break my nose, then I didn't fall down. Practice makes perfect. So I summarized them. Given statement, also known as a conditional. Contrapositive, converse, inverse. Put them together, you get a biconditional if they are both true. And don't forget, statement that's contrapositive or logically equivalent. So if you are struggling with a situation, write the contrapositive and see if it makes more sense. Often it does, and then you'll say, well, that statement must be true because the contrapositive is true. Or if the contrapositive is false, then that statement is definitely false. Remember that inverse converse, nothing to do with truth. You have to evaluate them on your own. That's it. Good luck.